right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. And yeah, you know what? I got a vlog for you guys. It's going to be a little bit advocacy heavy, but I'm going to have all my normal segments in there. We're going to do some beer. We're going to do some shout outs. We're going to do two first impressions. I literally have two first impressions to do this week, but I do have a retro vaping segment prepared as well as review for things that never got reviews. But let me get out my vlog notes and see what we got going on here. But thank you. Thank you so much for joining me again, you guys. Um, I still don't know. <sighs> I've been so focused on this FDA legislation stuff that I, I it's hard for me like I said in that FDA video which if you haven't watched my most recent FDA video that I uploaded on Monday just please go watch it it's just me kind of collecting my thoughts a little bit about everything that's going on I didn't want to record a video the day the regs came out because it would have been very shouty and yelly and, and then lots of obscenities in there and I kind of wanted to just whoo, like uh, let's let's calm down a bit so I'm past the anger part and I'm more into the let's organize and focus and be united and be as effective as possible okay that's that's kind of where I'm at right now so go watch that video that I did on Monday but uh, yeah we're back here we're back with the vlog and uh, first up First, uh, the first thing I want to talk about, yeah, it's uh, it's FDA related. A fellow named Brandon wrote to me and said, "Hey Nick, I just wanted to share with you the letter I wrote to my senator as a respiratory therapist. I am hoping my words and personal experience, if they take the time to read it, will strike a chord. Thank you for all your hard work." So this is what Brandon wrote to his uh, senator. So senators. Write to your senators, call your senators, representatives, call your representatives, write to your representatives. There is a website called GovTrack, uh, uh, Gov, GovTrack, uh, yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a long address, GovTrack.us backslash Congress backslash members backslash map. So what you can do is use this map to find the correct people to contact to. And some states are really easy, like Montana, one district. Wyoming, one district. North Dakota, one district. Nevada is split into two districts. And Utah is split into th three districts. And California is split up into like 59 fucking districts. And if you just use this map to zoom in onto Los Angeles, it is a ridiculous map the way that these are like separated by weird squiggly lines and some of the some of the districts have like a little hook like oh if you live here you're not part of the surrounding district you're part of district 28 but district 30 starts over here so i'm looking at this map down in the san diego area and i'm like okay well so no district no that's not my district that's not 44 where's my district it's oh okay it's no it's what is it it's 50 something no okay so 53 kind of goes into midway point loma but that's really the la mesa area and it's just confusing but hopefully you live in a simple state so you can easily track down your senators and your representatives but i am going to link in the description to uh to that website right there so, a uh, fellow named Brandon, this is the letter that he wrote to his senator. Mr. Senator, I am a respiratory therapist at North uh, Audubon, Audubon Hospital. Sure, at North Audubon Hospital in Louisville, Kentucky. I care for people daily who suffer, the, uh, suffer and ultimately die agonizing, suffocating deaths from cigarette smoking. I smoked for 10 years before starting my new career. Seeing these people suffer and the inevitability of the damage that cigarettes caused made me quit smoking, but I would not have been able to do it without the help of electronic cigarettes. That was five years ago, and I'm happy to say that I'm still a non-smoker and enjoy vaping daily with no ill side effects. I have, to my knowledge, been single-handedly responsible for at least 10 co-workers and several patients quitting smoking cigarettes and switching to vapor products. It is for this reason that I write you tonight to ask you to co-sponsor and support Bill H.R. 2058, the FDA's Deeming Authority Clarification Act of 2015. As unfortunate as it is, people don't like change. While their health should be motivation enough, they more often than not ask about the cost of vaping. 
If vapor products are deemed tobacco and regulated and taxed by the FDA as such, it has been approximated that within two years, 99% of the vapor products available on the market today will be banned. And what remains available will skyrocket to a price point where the vast majority of local vape shops and small businesses will be forced to close their doors. For most of us who vape, those tiny cigarette lookalike sticks from the gas station were only a starting point and would never suffice to keep us away from smoking. The the advanced high-end custom market and astronomical array of e-liquids and blends is where the majority of vapor product usage lies these days and with good reason it is astoundingly more it is an astoundingly more satisfying experience one that is exponentially more likely to maintain one's determination from smoking cessation those tiny sigalikes would ultimately be all that was left if anything causing a modern day prohibition the severe of which even the deadly cigarettes themselves have never seen. Ah, that is awesome. That is my favorite sentence in this whole email. Brandon, you freaking nailed it here. Leaving a modern day prohibition, the severity of which even the deadly cigarettes themselves have never seen. They have never, never, never banned or prohibited the sale of cigarettes. I can go to 7-Eleven and buy cigarettes, no problem. Cigarettes are always readily available from a multitude of brands. And you remember the Camel Special Blends? This is back when I was a serious, serious cigarette smoker. There was like the Stingers and the Citruses and the, the other one and the Mint Arabian Tobacco Flavors. Yeah, those were all Perfectly cool, kosher, have them out, and just smoke your little face off. Sir, time and again we hear the complaint that certain parts of the government do not represent the best interests of its people, but I believe that by protecting the vapor industry from harsh punishment and grouping it in with that which it, it is trying to eliminate, cigarettes and their associated health risks, it would be very affirming statement that you and your colleagues are working diligently to ensure the best interests of their most fun on our on, at their most fundamental levels, the ability to help us protect ourselves by kicking one of the most blatantly deadly and addicting habits through the electronic sales, through electronic cigarettes and vapor products. Please support and co-sponsor Bill HR 2058. Yes, Brandon, that's absolutely a fantastic email. Thank you so much for sending that my way. I hope that inspires people. I have emailed my senators and representatives and from the little bit of research I've done I, I, I don't want to say my senators are a lost cause but the senators in my area are uh, career politicians they are too uh, how do I say this without being an asshole they're too very democratic elderly ladies and I don't mean that like like old people are dumb i just mean that from from what i've seen in the press the press releases that they release they are very much for very very much for this new uh fda deeming regulations and it would be ooh quite uh quite a battle i, I mean i've emailed them but it, it's they're going to be tough to turn. Uh, the other guy, uh, Scott, who's I think his name's Scott, my representative, he is, uh, I believe, a Republican and much more open to the idea of personal freedom um, rather than crushing uh, crushing regulations. But thank you. Thank you so much for sending that my way. I, you know what? I got a great article that I'm going to link down to in the description, and I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, I talked about this in the Monday video. We talked about it on the podcast a little bit. I want to link it here again because I think it is so great. It comes out of FEE.org, which is the Foundation for Economic Education. And the whole headline of it is How the FDA is Helping Big Tobacco and Encouraging Teen Smoking. And this was published Friday, May 6th, 2016. And it talks about today the Food and Drug Administration finalized regulations asserting regulatory authority over e-cigarettes and various tobacco products. It goes on and on and on. But there's one there's one great little thing in here that I would like to read you. They're talking about basically like the differences between cigarette smoking and vaping, which we we all know the differences between cigarette smoking and vaping. Uh, the article says most e-cigs do contain nicotine, however, which makes them a potential substitute for cigarettes. So while using e-cigs may not be risk-free, and what is though, e-cigs present a small 
fact, small fraction of the risks poised by smoking. This is but one reason the United Kingdom's Royal College of Physicians urges the use of e-cigarettes as a tool to help smokers quit. Yes, unbelievable, unbelievable that every other blog, alternative news media outlet, and even the Royal College of Physicians themselves are all saying the same exact thing. They represent a fraction of the risk of traditional tobacco cigarettes, and you should use them if you want to quit smoking. One of the things included included in the FDA deeming regulations is vape shops and manufacturers. And if you're a manufacturer that can somehow get through this whole new tobacco products uh, you know, application, vape shops will not be allowed to tell people that it's healthier than smoking. You will not be allowed to do that. So you're basically going to be lying to your customers. So that means uh, someone's Aunt Matilda who, you know what, Matilda's a great name. We should bring that name back. So somebody's Aunt Matilda comes in. She's a smoker. She says to the guy behind the counter, I really want to try vaping. Is it really be better for you than smoking? The guy behind the counter has to lie to the customer and say no. I can't tell you that it's better for you than cigarettes. That's part of the deeming regulations. A shop owner, a shop worker cannot say that it is a less harmful alternative. They cannot say that it's better for you. They cannot say anything like that. Anything like that, uh, which I think is ridiculous. But I'm going to be linking down in the description to that as well. So while we're on the topic right now, we're a couple minutes, 15 minutes in, I want to talk about... Um, the coal bill, uh, this is just an aspect of the, of the FDA regulations. These are possible things that are going to happen. So this is the coal bill versus H.R. 2058. And there seems to be a little bit of kind of back and forth, uh, you know, discussion about w supporting the coal bill or supporting H.R. 2058. The, the obvious answer is yes, support both. Support both of these. Support the coal bill and support H.R. 2058. So... The way that I understand it, this is this is what I've been told by people that I trust, is that the coal bill, while it is farther along in the legislative process, it's it's close to the end. It has a really, really, really high chance of going through. It accomplishes the same thing as HR 2058. What both of these bills do is it will move that grandfather date from 2007 when mm, no vaping products were on the market and move it all the way up to 2015 when there was, yay, plenty of vapor products on the market. This is a good, good, good thing to, to do, to move. So the coal bill will do this and HR 2058 will also do this and the coal bill is already farther along in the process than HR 2058 so why are we telling everybody to do HR 2058 and not just go with the coal bill well the coal bill is something that will have to be re-voted on even if it goes through and even if we change that grand grandfather date it's something that's going to have to get re-voted on on a yearly basis not on a yearly basis but on a certain, I think it's every two years or something like this basis. Meaning that even if it goes through, that means in 2018, we'll be back in the same exact position going, hey, everybody, come on, we got to rally together, be united vapors and rally behind the coal bill and get all your representatives and senators to vote for the extension of the coal bill. The coal bill is a temporary measure. It's a good measure, but it's going to have to be re-voted on in 2018, which means that we could be back in the same exact position in 2018. H.R. 2058 is the same thing. It'll, it'll accomplish the same thing as the coal bill, but it's a much, much more permanent, permanent thing than the coal bill. If H.R. 2058 goes through and gets all the way through, which that's what we want it to do. We're asking, that's why we're asking our senators and representatives to co-sponsor and support this bill. It will be a much, much, much more permanent fixture. It's not something that's going to get re-evaluated in, in 2018 and possibly not voted for again. You know, it, there's no guarantee that if the coal bill goes through that in 2018, when it's re-upped to get voted on, that it's going to get through again. But HR 2058, there's no, there's no danger of that. There's no 
danger of it having to get voted on again. It's a much, much more permanent thing. Cool? Is that sort of clear as mud, I guess? Um, obviously, yeah, in the vlogs, all the vlogs moving forward, there's going to be a lot of advocacy talk, a lot of FDA, a lot of local stuff. I've always talked advocacy, and now more than ever, it's literally all I can think about. It's all I can focus on. I have not stopped talking, it seems like, for the last seven days about the FDA and the deeming regs and HR 2058, and I've been talking to everybody about it. I've been on a multitude of phone calls and just emails and and text messages and all this stuff and in fact on this last saturday me and my buddy sean mr sean trooper um we went and saw captain america civil war and i was so pumped to go see captain america civil war which is amaze balls by the way please if you are a nerd of any sort please go see captain america civil war it's awesome i want to go see it again i thought it was that good i think it's an amazing movie i'm, I'm so excited we're going to go see Captain America Civil War. It's awesome. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm just going to turn my brain off for two and a half hours or whatever. I'm going to sit and I'm going to be freaking entertained by superheroes. And I'm going to see fucking Spider-Man. And I'm so excited about it. And, you know, I, we're me and Sean are talking back and forth. We're like, oh, Star Wars, Rogue One, blah, 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 all this stuff. Ooh, Doctor Strange trailer. Hey, that's really cool. And then... And then he's like, bro, so what's up with this FDA nonsense? And I'm like... Here we go. So I just, you know, I wasn't like pissed off or offended, but you remember those uh, those talk boys that they had in Home Alone 2 where you can record your voice and then you can play it back? That's exactly what I felt like. It's just this reaction when someone asks me about the FDA deeming regs. I just feel like I've just pushed play and I'm like, ha, huh? like... All this stuff is just coming out of my mouth, and I'm explaining, oh, well, blah, 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 this, and the grandfather date, 99% of tobacco products will be gone off the market, and blah, 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 and even though the Royal College of Physicians said it's up to 95% safer than electronic cigarettes, and their, you know, their innovation should never be stifled or overregulated, and blah, 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 and all this stuff, and it, I just spilled it all out there, and he's like, and even he was taken back. He's not a smoker. He's not a vapor. He's just my good buddy, and he was like, wow, can they actually do that and i'm like explaining him i'm like yeah in fact they're going after intended use so things like zero nicotine liquids if it has the possibility of getting nicotine added to it later yeah zero nicotine liquids will fall under these fda regulations they're specifically targeting liquids they're specifically going after diy as well vegetable glycerin yeah it's a tobacco product if your intent for the tobacco for the vegetable glycerin is to be used in an e-liquid that you vape and inhale then yes the fda is considering that a tobacco product i know it sounds ridiculous but it's true anyway i've been talking about it woo non-stop it's just been crazy so so I'm going to take a minute right now. I'm going to take a little bit of step back from the uh, from the FDA regulations. Really, if you want to know more about it, fdaregs.info. I'm going to be talking about it every week. I'm sure me and Ruby will be talking about it every week in the Culture of Cloud podcast. I haven't done a post on Instagram in the last seven days that has not been advocacy related. I've been on Twitter. Go follow me on Twitter like crazy. Um, retweet me, and I've been trying to get the attention of basically anybody I can. Uh, the FDA and the FDA tobacco replied to me once each. I've been trying to get, you know what, our presidential candidates, Trump, love him or hate him, it's good to have his attention. Bernie Sanders, sure, love him or hate him, it would be great to get his attention. Hillary Clinton, love her or hate her, it would be great to get her attention. I've been reaching out to news media outlets, uh, CNN, Fox News, the local uh, San Diego Fox affiliate, uh, local newspapers, just doing everything I can, man. I've been going freaking bananas with this advocacy stuff, and it's be just because it's literally all I can think about. It's all I can. It's all I can actually think about. So I'm just going to take a step back right now. We're going to talk about something else. We're going to talk about an interesting picture I saw on uh, Facebook. Let me zoom in here. No, zoom in. There's a company. Uh, should I say the name? Yeah, I feel like I should say the name. They're called Vapecraft, okay? Not to be confused with Craft Vapory, which makes the mango sticky rice, which is just delicious and such a great company. Vapercraft Incorporated. So, 
someone bought a bottle of this liquid and they're a liquid company. So someone bought this bottle of liquid and there was a note included that said, thanks for your order. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. I mean, we do that too. We say, thanks for your order. Of course. Thank you. I mean, thank you for your order. Please take a moment to take a picture of your order and post it on Instagram. Please tag us in that photo at Vapecraft Inc. and hashtag Vapecraft Inc. as well. What? We would also greatly appreciate it if you would share your positive experience with any to any and all vaping groups that you may be a part of. This is, I don't know why that's rubbing me the wrong way. Here's the thing, Vapecraft. You know, I don't know if you're new here or whatever, but if people like your products, they will organically talk about your products. That's called organic growth writing a letter to a guy that just spent money at your store and like giving him homework and saying, please, please take a picture of your order and please post it on Instagram and then tag us at this and then use the hashtag as well. I wouldn't, if that was in one of my orders, if that was in no matter who it was, if I had just bought a Stormtrooper bobblehead and they're like, please take a picture of your Stormtrooper bobblehead and please put it on Instagram, I'd be like, yeah, right. Like that would make me not want to do that. But if people like your product, they'll do that anyway. But that's not where it stops. It goes on and it says, do you like free juice? Listen to this. This is amazing. Please post a positive review on YouTube and we will give you 200 free reward points that you can use to buy products from our website. Just message us from your YouTube account letting us know about your review and we will credit your account. Do you like free juice? So this is kind of really just a heads up. I'm not trying to drag this company through the mud, but if you go on YouTube and you see a YouTube review for Vapecraft Incorporated Juice, chances are it's going to be a good review. You know why? Because they ask. Post a positive review and we will give you free reward points. They are literally bribing their customers with free liquid to post positive reviews on YouTube. Again, I don't know if you're new here, Vapecraft. If people like your product, even if people don't like your product, if people like your product, they will organically post it to social media, post it on Instagram, post it on YouTube, begging your customers for exposure. Eh, that kind of rubs me the wrong way. And as a YouTuber, asking for positive reviews In turn, you get free reward points that you can spend on our site. Wow, that just rubs me the wrong way. Does that rub anybody else the wrong way? Let me know in the comments below if you're okay with that or if you think that's kind of a kind of a smarmy, shady sort of little thing to do there, just soliciting free, free stuff in exchange for positive reviews. I just... I don't like that practice. I think it's cheap and I don't like it at all. Okay, so we've uh, we've talked about a lot already. Done a lot of advocacy already. We read the email from the respiratory therapist. Uh, we got the coal bill. Uh, let's do real quick what I've been vaping. I'll knock these out because I do have a new segment I want to introduce because a guy sent me an email uh, from New Jersey and we're going to get to that in one second, but let's talk real fast about what I have been vaping. So. Been back on that mech life like crazy. I'm going to rock through these really fast. It's a continuous current Manhattan version 2. Got it back out, but the payload RDA on there that I reviewed just this last Monday. Been rocking it with some Coachella pineapple candy juice. This is a a juice that I got when I was in uh, Palm Springs at uh, CV Vapor Shop at their uh, Cloud Comp Vape Meet situation. And it's nice, man. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's nostalgic. I don't know what it is. I love a mech mod and an RDA. It's just, it's like the manual stick shift of vaping. That's it. There's no fancy screens. There's nothing to adjust. It's literally, you press a button and you vape your fucking face off. And this just happens to be a really good vape. That pineapple candy juice is good. If not, uh, just a touch throaty. That's just been performing like crazy. Uh, got that hooligan box mod. A lot of these are going to be repeats from last week, but I got that hooligan box mod. I got that 24 millimeter Sub-Zero RDA on there. I have that white gummy 
flavor that the more I vape it, the more I like it. It was so weird at first, but I just keep vaping like more and more and more of this white gummy flavor. It's just been awesome. This is 0 0.27, 75 watts. This is a rock and vape. I've actually been turning down the airflow on the 24 millimeter sub zero like uh, just a quarter of the way and it feels more like the airflow from the 22 millimeter sub zero rd way i don't know i get a little bit better flavor this way i just like it it's good man God, that white gummy flavor is just good. So, 22 millimeter Sub Zero RD Way. This is RD Way, whatever, Nick. RDA. This is a white dot mod uh, chuff cap on top. This is the Mod Crate Silo 2000 DNA 200. And I had a Culture of Cloud sticker on here, okay? And. I just wasn't feeling it. I didn't like the way it looked on there. So I wanted to put a Ruby Crew sticker on there, but it didn't quite fit. So what I did is I cut out the middle of a Ruby Crew sticker and I put it on there and it's like matchy. It's like white and white and stainless steel and then gray. And I just think it looks cool. And one, two, three, four, five. You're not going to be able to see this, but I got a custom Ruby Crew, one, two, three, four, five, uh, custom Ruby Crew, you know, DNA 200 screen. Cause I'm like a, you know, a matchy matchy guy and I like it when things match. And in here is rainbow sherbet in the dark, man. I vape so much of this juice. It's my daily banger juice. I, a day does not go by where I don't vape some rainbow sherbet in the dark. I just love it. God, it's so good. It is so good. So I've also been vaping uh, Titan. Titan, unregulated, dual parallel, 18650 box. I got a new blue, unbelievably matchy, matchy dot mod Petri. I mean, that matches. Look how matchy that is. That is the most matchy I've ever matchied in my life. Still got the culture cloud sticker on there, but it's so blue, blue, blue. Just blue, 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 matchy, matchy, matchy. This is a... What is this? This is a 8-wrap, 22-gauge uh, Anarchist around a 3-millimeter. I found out that I just discovered that I, re I like really big diameter coils. Um, this is just wicked with normal cotton. I mean, I don't know why I brought that up, but it is just wicked with normal, you know, Kogan Doe cotton. This is Ronan Emperor's Crunch, which uh, I haven't had in a while. It's one of my favorite juices, and I just haven't had it in a while. And on the Dot Mod, man, it's just got flavor for days, and I, I really like this vape. Even when I flood the atomizer, I still like this vape. So the last thing I've been vaping, uh, I got this combo. So this is the Roundhouse Kennedy 24 combo, and it looks a lot like that Ruby mod, right? And when I first opened it, I really thought it was a Ruby mod until I unscrewed the Kennedy from it, and I was like, oh, this is just... A, a, rented, a, a roundhouse mech mod from Kennedy Vapor and then a Kennedy 24 and it just happens to fit together so well that it looks like a ruby but the damn thing vapes like a ruby it's got the same ruby switch it's a hybrid 510 on top the Kennedy 24 works perfect with it this is a Brad's cap cap on top um, I'm vaping that Thai boba which as you can see is mostly gone this is actually a high resistance build um, it is a 0.25 ohm like that is really high i haven't built that high in a while but this kennedy ruby combo just hits really hard and it's been a really great vape this thai boba is nice it's boba y it's a little bit like cinnamon clovey spicy which is i don't know i've really been enjoying this vape really truly good wow two mech mods i'm rocking two mech mods this week so what i want to do after what i've been vaping is because i don't have very many first impressions this week i am going to read an email from steve and i'm going to introduce a brand new segment to the vlog called getting to know grim green So 
So Steve writes to me from New Jersey, and he says, Hi, Nick. My name is Steve. I'm 49 years old, and I live in the sticks of northwestern New Jersey. I moved out here for a job that was great but has since gone away, and now I have to travel a long way to and from work. Anyway, he talks about his job. He talks about his wonderful wife and kids. He goes on to say, I am also a musician. I play guitar. I've been a fan of many types of music my whole life. I was really into metal mostly in the 80s. Yeah, you were. We were all into metal in the 80s. Randy Rhodes was a big inspiration for me. Of course, he had just died before I knew who he was. I don't listen to metal much anymore, but I did buy the new Clutch Psychic Warfare album because you seem to like it so much. I really dig it. Thanks for that. You are welcome. Any, but any fan of Clutch is a friend of mine. So how about talking about some music or guitar setups in one of your vlogs? Do you always have you always have a guitar hanging in the background? Maybe it looks like a 335? No, I don't know what that is. Pull it off the wall and tell us what it is. Do you play it? Do you Are you in a band? Do you have a band? I don't play in a band anymore, but I really miss it. My claim to fame is that I played at CBGB's in New York. Of course, it was on a weeknight, and there were maybe 25 people there, but damn it, I played CBGB's. My favorite guitar is a Fender Stratocaster, uh, Les, Martin, Les Paul and Martin Acoustics, and oh yeah, I vape a lot. Never smoked cigarettes, but I was three cigars a day for seven years. I still have a whole inventory of cigars in my humidor that was there the day I, gave, I got my vape gear, and I don't even have the urge to go near them. Keep up the great work. Look forward to chilling with you again on Mod Monday. You'll probably never read this long-ass email, but I had to write it anyway because you need to know that you are super cool, even to this old geezer. Old geezer? Bro, Steve, you're 49 years old. That is far from an old geezer. When I'm 49 years old, I'm going to be in a metal band. But yeah, let's... uh. Let's talk about the guitar that's hanging up there. So this here guitar is not tuned at all. These strings are probably, I don't know, 14, 15 years old. They're just sitting on here. And this guitar is an Aria guitar. Or now that I'm a vapor, I guess it's Aria. I'm not really sure. I've called it Aria my whole life. It's a hollow body guitar. So it's a little on the thick side. It's got these big F holes in there. It's not the best guitar ever made. It it's a very sentimental guitar for me. Um, I don't I haven't played in a really long time. The last band I was in uh, out of Reno, Nevada, was a band called Glacier, and it kind of started because. I, even when I was in bands, I wanted to be in other bands. I wanted to play as many genres of music as I could. I, I was in a lot of, you know, thrash metal bands and death metal bands um, growing up. The first band I was in was like a metal band. We were trying to rip off Van Halen because our guitar player, Luke, he just fucking loved Van Halen. And so we were trying to do like Ugly Kid Joe cover bands, cover songs. Remember Ugly Kid Joe? And we were trying to sound like Van Halen and that didn't work. And, uh, you know, I was in, I've probably been in 16 different bands in my life, ranging all sorts of genres from just like the Swamp Donkey was my favorite band that I was ever in. Me and my buddy, Mark Moots, um, who, you know, he's, he's part of the Grim Cult Juice line as well. He's my tattoo artist. We were in a band together for a number of years called the Swamp Donkey. In fact, they're still around. They still play uh, under the name Weight of the Tide, although it's just Mark now. None of the other members are there, so that's why they changed their name probably. But you can still hear Mark's band, Weight of the Tide. I think it's actually on iTunes as well. And, uh, you know, the Swamp Donkey, we were just, we were all listening to a lot of, like, Caius you know, or Place of the Skull or anything that Wino was in or Fu Manchu and like just dirty southern stoner rock. And that's what we played. And I loved it. That is, is probably one of my favorite bands that I've ever been in in my life. And so w when I was in when I was in the Swamp Donkey, I had been wanting to play something a little bit more aggressive. I wanted to play some black metal because I'd been listening to a lot of like really horribly underproduced like sounds like it was recorded in the forest like really true cult black metal stuff and i was just loving it like crazy i was just going i loved this black metal and so i wanted to start a black metal band and i thought i could do it by myself 
I could just use my computer and my bass guitar and I could create a one man black metal band. And that's how Glacier was born. And then I think it was actually at a Swamp Donkey show that my buddy Jeff was like, hey, I heard you have a black metal band named Glacier. I have I play drums. I could be the drummer. And I'm like, done. We have a two man black metal band now. And then we got my buddy Rich, Richard, who I love to death. I need to call that guy. Um, he was in the Swamp Donkey with me, and he did double duty. He played in the Swamp Donkey, and he also became the guitar player from Glacier. We got our other band, our other buddy Daniel, who had never been in a band before, and this was his first band was Glacier, and he started playing guitar for us. So we're like, great, like we got a full band. We got Jeff on drums, I'm on bass. We got two guitar players, and I will do vocals. That's it. We got a complete band, and so we wrote like four or five songs with no vocals. And then it came to the point where, at band practice, we're playing through these songs, and I'm like, eh, I don't think I can do vocals. <laughs> like I had done vocals in a lot of other bands. I did a lot of death metal vocals, and that's just what I did. I taught myself how to do it without, you know fucking up my throat or fucking up my voice and I had a I had a solid technique for it. In fact, I could probably still do it upon request, although I don't think I would want to. But um Jeff and uh Jeff and and Rich, they had a mutual friend uh Ryan who had played in a couple other Reno hardcore bands and he came to band practice one day and he didn't have any lyrics or anything. He just started screaming over the music and we're like, dude, that's fucking rad. And so when he actually finally wrote some lyrics and some vocal phrasing, we were like an actual band. And Glacier was a band for about a year before we played our first show. Um, and our first show was great and I loved it. And you know what? I still love those guys. I think they're still a band. I'll link down in the description to the, what is it? The Reverb Nation for Glacier if you want to hear just... Filthy, crusty, doomy black metal with lots of shrieky, screamy vocals over it. That's what we played, and I freaking loved it. But going backwards in time, um, in my very first high school band, I was the bass player, and I didn't have a bass guitar. The bass guitar I was using was on loan from the high school. Nobody in the band in high school played bass, and so the school had this extra bass that we found in like one of the back storage cabinets, and I was like... I could probably use this for the band, right? And so we would have band practice at the high school in the band room, and I would play the school's bass poorly, but I would play it, you know? And it came to the point where I needed my own guitar, and I'm, you know, a, I'm a poor high school kid, and, you know, we weren't, um, you know, my parents were divorced, and we didn't, we didn't grow up with... Uh, we didn't grow up with a lot of, you know, we weren't poor, but I mean, we didn't have a lot of money. There wasn't a lot of money for extra stuff. We didn't really go on vacations. There was never really any extra stuff. We had food on the table and we had a, uh, you know, a roof over our head and we were, we were fine with that. There, we just didn't have a lot of money and that's, that's, it is what it is. You know, my mom, uh, whom I loved uh, to death, she worked, uh, her ass off, to make sure that me and my brother had, uh, you know, had normal niceties of life, you know, like things like dinner every night and a place to live. And, you know, I, it's weird looking back and just being like, you know, we, we didn't really know any different, you know, we didn't buy extra frivolous things, but we were, we were happy and we didn't really know any different. So, um, I, I knew that I wouldn't be able to get a guitar. I j had just come to the come to the conclusion that that's fine. I just am not going to be able to have a guitar. I'm not going to be able to own my own guitar or have a guitar to use, have a bass guitar to use in bands. And, you know, uh, the high school band had long since broken up and me and my buddy Jim were wanting to play together and I just didn't have a guitar. And, um, my mom, um, just, I'm sorry if this makes me emotional, but my mom worked really hard and saved up the money one Christmas to buy me this guitar. <laughs> and she was must have been in cahoots with my brother who had agreed to get less Christmas gifts that year so that my mom could afford to buy me this guitar. And I love it. I, I, I treasure this guitar because it... I'm sorry. It makes me emotional, but th to me, this guitar represents... Um, someone believing in me. 
it represents uh, my mom going out of her way to get me this guitar so that I could fucking play in a rock band, which, you know, to her, it's just an extracurricular activity, but it meant a lot to me, you know, at the time. So that's this. I never, I never play this guitar. That's about all you're going to get out of me out of this guitar. It's not a great sounding guitar. I just love it so much. Um, and that's why it hangs on my wall. It's because it, it means a lot to me. And it's a reminder of sacrifices being made so that I could be happy and that you have to, you know, and this is going to sound cliche and I don't care believing in yourself. You know what I mean? Someone believing in you and that giving you the energy to believe in yourself. And I was so, I don't know, overwhelmed by this guitar because I knew that we couldn't afford it and I knew that I wasn't getting one, but it was still there on Christmas. And I got this guitar and I called Jim and I was like, I fucking got a guitar. We're going to rock. And I ended up playing with Jim in various different bands for the next decade or so. And I used this guitar and there came times when I probably could have afforded a new guitar and I, I didn't, I wanted to use this. This was my guitar. This represented sacrifices made so that I could be happy. And I, I wanted to get the most life I could out of this guitar. Like I said, I don't play it anymore, but it's sentimental to me and it means something to me. So it, it hangs in my office. So that's, that's why that's where this guitar comes from. That's why I love it so much. So I apologize for getting emotional, but this guitar just means the world to me. Um, so yeah, that's uh, getting to know Grim Green. Maybe we can do this a couple times a month. I don't know if you have any uh, personally intrusive questions that you might like to have answered. Um, I might be more than willing to accommodate you in a vlog, but uh, after all that, after all the first impressions, after nope, after all the what I've been vaping, after all the guitar talk, after all the FDA stuff, it's time to get over there. Oh, I'm going to enjoy this. The beer section. So the beer we're going to be tasting tonight comes from the Lost Abbey Brewery. This is their Carnival Ale. This is an 8% uh, beer. The Lost Abbey is a local uh, California brewery. And would you look at that? There's a freaking cork on top. I don't even know what I'm going to do with my life. Um, I don't honestly remember where this beer came from. I think Casey brought it to me. Um, she does. Uh, she's on a radio show every Friday night in San Diego called... Uh, called the rock and roll happy hour where they just basically play music and and then and then every once in a while they talk about beer and so uh, she brings me beers that they talked about on the show and i think on the last show they did the 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 guys from the lost abbey were there and she stole this for me and i don't know anything about it i know i do really enjoy lost abbey beers i did one I thought I felt like it was pretty recently, but it could have been like over a year ago. It was a really expensive, like seventeen dollar bottle of Lost Abbey. Clicking over to Beer Advocate, this is Carnival from Lost Abbey. It's got a very good eighty nine percent rating. They say it's a saison farmhouse style ale. One of the top raters rated it at a three point nine out of five, which seems okay. 2008 edition, this one's carbonation edged off, still a nice summer saison. Light cloudy color, pleasant spicy odor, easy mouthfeel with some caramely zesty cardamom, orange citrus, pepper nutmeg cloves, grassy hops builds to and grassy hops build in finish. Another decadent and different Lost Abbey 2012 edition, much better owing to fresh lemony taste. Cool. So, wow, that sounds nice and complicated. Now, Mr. Cork, I don't like you. You don't like me. But let's make the best of this. All right. So I'm going to be pouring this into a traditional Belgian-style tulip glass. It does look very carbonated or effervescent. It is a very, very clear, clear light color. If someone poured this in a cup and said, this is Bud Light, I would be like, okay, 
That is Bud Light. It looks, uh, I guess it's very slightly opaque. It's very carbonated. It's got a nice big head on there, but it is a very light, light, light color. Light in color. Interesting. The smell is that of uh, beer. I do get a little bit of like spicy cloviness in there. Uh, the citrus that I'm getting from it isn't quite like... Uh, a lemony citrus. It's more of like an orange, orange peely citrus. Yeah. Anyway, so this has a pretty good rating on it. So I guess thank you to uh, Casey from Casey Hart's Cocktails and uh, the guys at the Lost Abbey for bringing that beer. Whoops! I shook the whole camera. Cheers, everybody. Here's to you. Very, very sweet spicy, citrusy, like orange peels, and the carbonation, I'm already going to burp. Carbonation or effervescence is crazy. It is uh, it is it is very, very carbonated. Very carbonated. Very easy to drink, though. Very, It's got a, a nice, crisp, very crisp mouthfeel. It's almost like a carbonated citrus clove wine like that's that's what i'm getting from this fuck this is good this is really good i could um drink a lot of this which is very very dangerous i think that that white gummy juice <clears throat> ooh pardon me what's in the news robin i think that white gummy juice is just going to pair amazingly with this beer white gummy juice that's good. Um, I do a lot of vape pairings, uh, you know, um, on this. I've been tasting beer and vapor for what seems like years now. So I know that people out there have their own favorite beer pairings, beer and vapor juice pairings. Let me know down in the comments so I can get some ideas. Um, I do need to do some beer shopping, actually. We went to BevMo to restock Casey on her Casey Hart's Cocktails stuff. And so I'm looking at all these beers. and I'm like, oh, that one, oh, that one, oh, that one. So I'm going to get through some of the beer that I have. And I really want to go buy some new beers. And it'd be cool. <laughs> God, that was gross. It would be cool to have some like uh, some ideas of what uh, beer pairings other people like. Anyway, Hooligan Mod, Kennedy 24, White Gummy Juice, and uh, the Lost Abbey Carnival Ale. <laughs> Yeah, did I mention that it's uh, carbonated? Oh, wow. That is good. That is a really good pairing. I am dying to try this now with Rainbow Sherbet in the Dark. I think this is going to be a great pairing. Yeah, that is good. So for some reason, like that sweet gummy or the citrus is just pairing really well with this beer. Um, I, I feel like a, a, a citrus or like a lemony juice would pair really well with some of these like Saison farmhouse style ales or like a Belgian wit beer or like the Belgian ales. I'm actually going to give one more shot. I'm going to give another shot to this uh, pineapple candy from the Coachella juice. I think that would actually go really well. Yep, that wins. That wins the beer pairing. I don't know anything about this juice. I believe it's just their house juice. I don't even think you can get it online. If you can get it online, I'll look. It's from a company called Coachella, and it says pineapple candy, and it's it's good. I mean, that is a good that is a good flavor. That is a good beer. All right, so I need to get I need to get moving here onto the vlog before I get too hammered from over drinking this beer because I just want to drink literally the entire bottle right now it's that good yeah i love that citrusy clovey flavor mm, mm, it's good it's good all right so after beer time after all that stuff uh i do have some time we're gonna do some quick shout outs it is shout out time I actually just saw a great Instagram post from Kevin Skipper. He runs the VCC events. He says, feel free to share. Oh, oh wow. That was gross. Um, anyway, uh, 
Ask the $10 billion question, why are vapor products being subject to harsher regulation by the federal government than lethal cigarettes? Visit whoismyrepresentative.com, enter your zip code, and ask your representative. Absolutely. I'm going to post a link in the description. Thanks, Kevin. This just in on the vlog. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, whoismyrepresentative.com. That might actually work better than the weird, confusing map. Confusing? Confusing map with all the different districts in there. Whoismyrepresentative.com. I just, uh, you know, I pause the video and I look through my Instagram account and, uh, you know, I see cool shit that happens, uh, you know, I can bring it up in the vlog. I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's do shout outs. So I had one shout out uh, actually from YouTube. A guy left a comment uh, a couple days ago named Chris. He says, Nick, a dear friend of ours in the vaping community, Faima, 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 Faima. I apologize if I'm butchering this name. F-I-A-M-M-A, Faima. Who is in her 80s got some bad news from her doctor. She smoked for 55 years before she started vaping. She has been a warrior in advocacy for us. She found out that a tumor that had not responded to chemo has gotten larger in her lung and she is now terminal. She was This was due to 55 years of smoking and she didn't quit in time. She had helped a lot of people quit smoking. She used to host a show on Vapors.tv to try to boost awareness according to what she said on Facebook. The doctors say that there will be a lot of pain. It is very hard for me to even post this comment. I have a lot of memories sitting in front of my computer chatting with her. Please shout out our friend. Thank you in advance. Absolutely, Chris. Thank you for bringing that up. You are shouted out. Fayama. I'm sorry. I don't know how to say your name. And this is just the worst thing ever because I'm trying to give you a very sincere shout out. Fayama. F-I-A-M-M-A, FIMA. That's that's your name. If not, then that's your new name, FIMA. Uh, then you're shouted out thanks to your buddy Chris who who loved your show. We do have some more we do have some more shout outs to do that actually aren't on the computer. So this guy uh, actually wrote to me on uh, on on paper stuff. Uh, whatever this is, is this Dunder Mifflin paper? I'm not really sure. Anyway, Travis writes to me, and look, I'm not going to share his whole story here because it is a little bit on the personal side. He said he struggled with addiction. Um, he was smoking a lot. Um, he finally got a vape. Uh, he one of his friends told him about a guy on YouTube that does reviews, uh, and he was just in the Grim Army. Um, he's clean now, and uh, he sent me his door to his mod to get signed. And he's telling me his story, and this is something, if you're at a vape meet and you want me to sign the door of your mod, absolutely, I will do it. Generally, I don't like it when people send me things to sign because I don't, like, I'm not that guy. I'm not, I'm not a... I'm not a famous person. Um, I, I'm i just not, and I don't think of myself that way. And so I don't like, you know, I don't, I don't want, I just don't want people to send me something that it means something to them for me to sign. Because it could, I, I could break it, it could get lost in the mail, but you know what? I really felt for this guy, Travis, and I said, you know what, brother? Send me your door, I will sign it. So, Travis, if you're watching, that's the door to your mod. Can you see it? It's got this crazy wrap on it. This is what I wrote on the inside. Hashtag clouds, bro. Grim. That's for you. He asks at the very the very end of his, uh, his mail here. It says, how do I get a Grim Army t-shirt or a sticker? I will include some stickers when I return this to you. Hopefully tomorrow I will include some stickers. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any Grim Army shirts here, um, but we do have them on the Namber Juice site. I think they're like 12 bucks or something like that. If you wanted to buy a T-shirt, then that's just fine. And then he says on the back, and just FYI, uh, my life has done a full 180. I am married. I have a career uh, in sales for a bil billion-dollar corporation. I bought a house, a new car, and most of all, I go to church as much as I as much as I can. My life can't get better. Absolutely. Travis, that is awesome. I love hearing a good story. And yes, your life can always, 
always get better. But this is your door, Travis. I wrote Clouds Bro Grim in case any of your skeptical friends are like, oh, no way, that's not really Grim Green signature. You can just show him this and be like, bro, look at the vlog. He's holding it right there, Clouds Bro Grim. And then someone says, oh, that's just Photoshopped. No, because, well, I mean, I guess it could could be Photoshopped, but no, I'm holding it. Look, show him the video. Clouds, bro. Grim. Anyway, Travis, this is headed back to you as soon as I remember to get to the post office. Now, I've got another shout out here for a guy named Dan. A lot of paper, a lot of paper correspondence going on here. I like this. Hey, Grim, my name is Dan Maxwell, and I'm an ex-tattoo artist, and I now do design work while attending college. I'm sending you this original drawing to thank you for helping me quit smoking after 10 years of being addicted to cigarettes. In the near future, I'm opening a web shop to sell my original artwork as well as offering tattoo, logo, and label design. If you could give me a shout out in your next vlog to help get me some more exposure, I would greatly appreciate it. Enclosed is an original drawing for you to keep as well as a print to give away. You can find more of my work on Facebook and Instagram at maxwell.draws or email me maxwell.draws at gmail.com. Thanks for everything you do, Dan Maxwell. Absolutely. And this is what he sent me, and it's so cool. I want to get it framed. It is a sexy Star Wars Stormtrooper girl, Imperial symbol behind her with like space and nebulas. She's holding a mod, and she's riding a unicorn bottle. How fucking cool is that? That's that's cool. And it's drawn really well. Even the vapor coming out of her mouth looks cool. And this is the original one, I can tell, because there's like paint and Sharpie marks on the back side. And the print doesn't have that. So I'm going to frame this original one and put it somewhere. I've kind of got this Star Wars thing kind of going on over here. I might put it up there. I might put it over there. I think I'm going to frame it and put it up there. But it might not be in view of the camera at all times, Mr. Maxwell. But thank you. Thank you for this. I really appreciate it. I am going to frame it. And I am definitely going to hang it in my vape office lair somewhere. So let's see. Uh, that's all the physical shout outs I have. Let's get over to some email. Let's do some email shout outs. So I got an email here from Rachel. Rachel writes to me and says, Hi, Nick. I'm emailing you all the way from Liverpool, UK. My fiance, Carl, really likes your vlogs and listens to what you talk about. I know he would really like a shout out, but not likely to ask himself. Typical Carl. From watching you, he has started to make his own high VG vape juice, which is epic. And when he goes around stores in the UK, which are all pretty shit, he's the one telling guys in the store what's what. <laughs> anyway, I just want to give him a shout out because he is the best. Please say, no one likes you, Carl, at the end of the shout out. Oh, damn it, at the end of the shout out. He says it to everyone and hangs up, so it would be good for you to say it to him. Okay, here you go. Sorry, Rachel. No one likes you, Carl. Anyway, there you go, Rachel. Carl, boom, consider yourself both shouted out. Let's go back in time a little bit. Let's go, let's go to one of these older ones. Got time for one more. Let's do one more shout out. Let's, let's just pick a date. Let's pick a date here. How about Rebecca from February? Oh, no. Okay, I'm sorry. Rachel, we'll get back to you. That one is... Uh, that one's just uh, that one's just a little bit too long. All right, so let's go back to February real fast. A fellow named Stevo writes to me and says, "Yo, dude, I was talking to you briefly at Vape Fest Ireland 2015. I was the dude in the Amana Marth hoodie, by the way. Yes, you have not only good taste in hoodies, but good taste in music. I am the webmaster slash co-founder at the Belfast Vape Bar." We're a review website based in Northern Ireland. Would it poss be possible to get a shout out sometime? Sure. That's that's it. There you go. There's a shout out. Uh, I will have to Google Vape Fast Vape What? Belfast Vape Bar. Uh, I'll post the link in the description for you. Absolutely. Let's see what we got going on here. Belfast Vape Bar. Home reviews. Discount codes. Welcome. To the Belfast Vape Bar, this month's specials, gourmet reviews, cool, looks like a vape fest, looks like a vape website, featured vendors, Vaporgate, okay, sure, absolutely, you, Steve-O, are shouted out, as well as Belfast Vape Bar, it sounds like a vendor, it's weird that you're a reviewer, and then you named your, you named your review site the Belfast Vape Bar. 
But it is. It's really just all liquid reviews. Let's see what he thought of Milkman by One Hit Wonder. Oh, he got it from Republic of Vape. So Ronan and Sarah. Yeah, you guys are shouted out too. The exhale was cloudy milkshake goodness. Well, there you go. He liked uh, Milkman. There you go. Milkman from One Hit Wonder. There you go. Anyway, thanks, buddy. I'll be shouting you out. Uh, Definitely, I'll link down in the description. So after all of that, let's get to my very small list of first impressions. So like I said, I don't have a whole hell of a lot of first impressions this week. In fact, one of the first impressions is something that I purchased myself. I'm a member of no less than 3,000 fucking groups on Facebook, but there's a couple groups wink wink you know who you are wink wink slv wink wink that i frequent more often than others and i've seen a lot of people using this thing this is the jewel j u u l and it is a little e-sig and it's a cartridge based system so you have these little cartridges full of e-liquid right and they just snap down into this battery snap And then you got a little light indicator on there and you kind of hold it like this and you just take a drag like you would a cigarette. It's an automatic battery and it vapes surprisingly well. Now, the nicotine content in this is it's high. It's on the high side. And I'll be honest with you, I was getting along much better with the tobacco one. I vaped through the tobacco pod uh, already because I liked the flavor and I just kept using it and kept using it and kept using it. And then I threw in the fruity flavor. Now, the fruity flavor isn't that great. It's not super good. And I don't know if it's just the fruity flavor, but it is really super throaty. I'm going to I'm going to I'm literally going to try to do this without coughing. Okay, so mission accomplished. I got through one drag without coughing. Oh, that throat hit though. It it Let me tell you, man. If you are a smoker and you want something that doesn't necessarily stylistically or size wise or shape wise match a cigarette but you want to smoke something like a cigarette the jewel is freaking bomb god that feels way too much like smoking to me way too much like smoking to me um it's nice they're somewhat uh on the pricey side let me get to their website here like i said everyone was just raving about this like you can get custom you can people are like custom engraving these j raps makes wraps for the jewel i think i bought one what was it like 60 bucks 50 bucks okay so 49.99 with free shipping you get a jewel pod four pack one rechargeable jewel device, a USB charger, and a one-year warranty on it. So it's sleek. I loved the look of it on the website. I'm like, it's very Apple-y, isn't it? It's like, it's like a sleek little, it feels like a, like a high-end, like electronic product. Like it just, it's like a little Bluetooth or something. You're like, hello, hello, hello. It just looks really cool. The pods are nice. They just snap into place. Just snap in and you just drag like you would on a cigarette. It's an automatic switch. And I noticed what I've been doing to get a bit of a hotter vape is the airflow comes in through this little diamond shape, which evidently isn't a diamond anymore. It's a different shape now on the new jewels, but they're the same. Is I cover up with my finger one of those diamond shapes and I get a hotter vape i get a hotter more throaty intense vape i have a feeling this is going to be one of those things that i'm going to travel with i'm definitely definitely taking it with me to las vegas because being in a casino and playing craps or blackjack or even just slot machines and sitting there with this little jewel that would be awesome but man the throat hit on it is intense i can't uh i can't 
it's hard. It's hard for me. Let's try a different flavor. You know what? Let's try a different flavor. That's the fruit. That's the fruit flavor. Okay, I got the little jewel pods here. There's it's a bit. Let's try the minty one. Let's try the minty flavor. So you're gonna go back in here, fruit flavor. And I'm gonna try this minty one. Now they're color coded, so the minty one is is blue. So it comes with a little sleeve that you you take off of there. And I'm just gonna pop this in here. And now we're ready to vape mint. Let's vape the minty flavor. Let's see. Yeah, mint. It's called mint. Uh, there's mint, fruit, brulee, and tobacco. So there's a mint, a fruit, a bakery, and a tobacco flavor. This is the mint. Holy crap, that is good. Oh my god. That is a menthol cigarette. That is taking me back to so many weird places of smoking right now. I can't even. Much smoother. Much smoother than that fruit. There was something in that fruit that I wasn't quite getting along with. But this mint is just delicious. There were some O's there. You saw them. Wow, this mint is really good. I'm really happy with this little $50 purchase of the jewels. I'm going to get some more jewel pods before I head out to Vegas. I'm probably going to order those tonight. I like the mint. I want to get a five pack of just the menthol, of just the mint. It's great. It's just plug and play and you charge it and you just vape it. There's no fiddling. There's no fucking coil building. There's no coil heads. There's no nothing. This is like the supreme smoker kit right here. Good. Oh, it's so good. It's good, man. I'm surprised. Good job, Jewel. That's good. Those are Those are good. I can see why people like these so much. This would be fucking great for traveling or great for great for the casino um one of the things that i really like is the way it charges so this is the little charger medili and it's just a usb little slight tiny little dongle here i plugged it into an apple charger for the wall and best of all you just stick your jewel in it and it'll charge and it's magnetic so i can plug it into my wall sideways and just go boop now my jewel's charging boop now i'm gonna vape it Boop, now my jewel's charging. It's cool, man. It's just a cool little techno-y thing that I am uh, I'm really enjoying. I really enjoy this mint flavor. Damn, that's good. Damn, that's good. Well done, Jewel. So the next first impression I have to do is going to be an actual, actual first impression because we all love those so much. This is the new E-Grip 2 from Joy Tech. This is the follow-up to their E-Grip 1, which was, uh, you know... That little tiny mouth-to-lung guy that had an internal tank. It looks like this has an internal tank as well. It looks like this has a clock on it. Like a like a clock with like a second hand on it. Just looking from the graphics. I haven't updated this in any way. It says it's running on the newest firmware, which is version 4.3, which is cool. So, warranty card? Sure. That looks good. Thank Joytech. And here's the little guy. Look at that. Look at that little guy. That is a cool little guy. It's got obviously an internal lipo because uh, I can't think of a way. I can't see the way to change the batteries. So it has an internal lipo. Let me just let me just look at the instructions real fast before I get too far into this so I don't get super frustrated like last time. Wait a minute. These are all in French. All right. I feel like that joke never gets old. Anyway, uh, let's see. Power on, vaping, change LED color. Ooh, set screen protection time. Ooh, key lock function. Ooh, apply the atomizer adapter. Ooh, there's an atomizer adapter? Comes with a box of goodies. Yeah, look at that. Some coil heads, a uh, uh, drip tip. Uh, there is an atomizer adapter. So. Wow, so that is actually really cool. So this is gonna this is gonna use the same style uh, internal tank as like the cuboid or like the cuboid, you know, uh, the cuboid mini, the cubis tank or the cuboid mini. It's that same coil head goes on here, then you dunk it into the juice, and then you screw it down. Oh, it's very lungy. Ooh, or mouth to lungy could be both, but it comes with this with this atomizer adapter that you can screw in here. Look at that! Oh, that's cool! So you screw that atomizer adapter down and now you can put an atomizer or a tank on top of this and it just becomes 
its own device. Yep, five clicks on, there's a clock. There is a full-on clock on there. How do I set the time to the clock? That's the first thing I need to figure out. You can change the LED color. No way. There's a game on here? Oh no, that's just, oh, that's the LED color of the inside of the tank. You can change the LED color inside the tank. Of course, I have to go with green. So when you press the button, oh, there's no atomizer. Oh, I need to fill up this tank as fast as I can. Yeah, it comes with Flappy Bird. It literally comes with Flappy Bird and it's pre-installed on the software. That's kind of amazing. Okay, so that's a mouth-to-lung Clapton at 1.5. That's a stainless steel 316 direct lung. It comes with three coil heads and that's a stainless steel 316 at 0.25. So I'm gonna do the stainless steel 316.5 ohm coil head. And it also comes with what looks like a rebuildable base uh, but the in, historically the Joy Tech rebuildable bases have not been uh, have not been great or easy to use at all. So I am not excited about trying to learn how to build on that thing. So I'm gonna get some tobacco juice. I'm gonna drip some drops like I always do on the coil head. You know what? I, I don't want to bore you with this. I'm just gonna get this all set up and ready to go. And then, uh, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, I don't exactly know how to set the clock. It's going to take a little bit of time, but right now it, there's a clock on it that I don't exactly know how to set. It's not quite working the way they said it was, but anyway, so there's no... Okay, there is... There's a little arrow here for filling up the juice, so that's where I'm going to fill up the juice to. Blah. Attach the coil head here. Screw it all together. And this has the same, you know unscrewy screwy method as the uh as the cuboid mini you just screw it down and then you adjust your airflow accordingly seems like clockwise more airflow counterclockwise less airflow so let's let's try this out let's turn it up so this is 0.5 ohms so i want to set this to start off a little bit low let's let's turn this all the way down to 28 watts let's try this 28 watts and try to get some juice flowing in there. Let's see how it does at 28 watts. Great! In case you're wondering, it does great at 28 watts. It's some, why am I in the menu now? No, how do I get out of the game? I'm suddenly playing Flappy Bird. What? Why am I playing Flappy Bird on a Joytech Evic? Or on a Joytech... No, let, how do I get out of Flappy Bird? Okay, okay. Get me out of Flappy Bird. How do I leave Flappy Bird? Press the fire button up. Regulatory button simultaneously. You will enter into LED color mode. Continue to press up on the regulatory button three times and you will enter into the game mode. You can choose easy, normal, hard, or exit by pressing the down regulatory button and press the fire button to play the game. Please press the fire button to keep the bird blind without hitting into the beams. No, you cannot vape in game mode. How do I l fucking leave the game? I don't want a game on <laughs> my thing, Joy Tech. One, two, three, four, five. Why? It just keeps making me play this game. I just want to vape it. How did I even get into the Flappy Bird menu? Okay, come Oh, this is fucking annoying. It just keeps losing. I keep playing this game and it loses and loses and loses and loses and I don't know how to get out of it. Okay, can I just let it rest and it'll get out of it? No. It's not letting me leave Flappy Bird. It's not letting me leave Flappy Bird. All I want to do is vape. I took one toot, and it won't let me leave Flappy Bird. Fucking hell, it's just making me play Flappy Bird over and over again. I just want to vape. I don't want to play Flappy Bird anymore. Seriously, how the fuck do I get out of this? Okay. Huh. <sighs> okay, so if you're stuck in Flappy Bird mode, press up and then fire simultaneously and it will get you out of Flappy Bird mode. So what I'm gonna do is turn this to 32 watts. That's giving me four volts on a 0.52 ohm stainless steel coil head. Awesome, fucking awesome. Wow, the flavor is good on this. Wow, wow, Joy Tech. 
Seriously, wow. Joy Tech has upped their game with their coil heads. All their coil heads have the notch coils in them now, and they are awesome. <laughs> Fuck, this is a good vape. That's the weirdest thing. So it has this screensaver that if you press up or down while you're in the screensaver, it takes you to a weird different menu. Okay, so this is going to take a little bit getting used to. I'm going to leave this, let's crank up the wattage just a little bit more, just because I like to see how far I can take things. Let's set it to 35 watts. That's 4.2 volts on a 0.5 ohm stainless steel coil head. God damn it. That is an awesome vape. That is a really good vape. Wow. Wow. Wow, Joy Tech. Wow. Good job. So far, congrats on this. Okay, the Delrin drip tip obviously has a smaller diameter, much smaller diameter for doing mouth to lung. So, got to leave the uh, stainless steel drip tip on there, which is fine. It works great. Holy crap, Joy Tech. You have outdone yourself. This is a cool mod. Uh, I'm not super stoked on the interface. It seems like I can get to that Flappy Bird game a little too accidentally. But so far, it's uh, it's pretty cool. Obviously, yeah, this is the very first first impression of this ever. I don't like that it goes into Flappy Bird mode. See, there's the screensaver. It's like a clock. And then if I press up, it'll let me change the screen time. Oh, God, no. Exit. That's how I got to Flappy Bird. <laughs> One, two, three. So let's change this to stainless steel so it only supports nickel. Uh, yeah. Okay. It supports stainless steel, but it doesn't have a stainless steel setting. You have to use a custom TCR range. That sucks. Damn good. Damn, damn, damn good, Joytech. So I'm going to get to know this device for a little while before I feel comfortable doing a full review for it. But man, so far the Joytech eGrip 2 kind of impressive and the led in there lights up green that is cool i love that you can change the color of the window in there i dig it i'm digging it a whole lot so mm, mm. that's literally all the first impressions i have for this week um wasn't a lot. Didn't get anything in the mail, so all good. That just means I cut my first impression short. What we're going to do now is some retro vaping. Yeah! So what do I have to retro vape this week? Well, I decided... Uh, Last retro vaping I did was for the Tugboat Mech Mod, so why not go way back in time, all the way to, oh, I don't know, early 2013, and I am going to put a build on my very first Tugboat V1 rebuildable dripping atomizer. This was just a three-post, tiny little, looks like 1.5 millimeter airflow holes. Very tight draw on there. I'm excited about this. It came with that... Remember the original tugboats had that really long, ridiculous drip tip on there? But it was nice. It worked well. So the question is here, let's put it on DNA 200. So just whatever I build can, can vape fine. Ooh, strong O-rings, tugboat. Well done. Oh, maybe that's just because it's really old. <gasps> I'm missing a screw. Oh, no. Shit. Now I need to find a tugboat screw. Well, hopefully I can find a tugboat screw. I'm just going to put a dual coil build on here and we'll come back once it's all built. Well, around a three millimeter post, I wrapped an eight wrap 22 gauge nichrome build on there. Came out to 0.17 ohms. I have it set to 80 watts. It's glowing nice and evenly and... Oh man, this old tugboat deck, which I haven't built on, I haven't built on in a year, maybe maybe longer than a year. I was rocking the tugboat version two for so long, and unfortunately, the tugboat version three was an, oh, just a supreme, supreme letdown, but I haven't built on this tugboat, ver tugboat version one deck in quite a long time, and 
bigger coils doesn't get along with it too well additionally three post decks that are this claustrophobic are hard to build on this three post deck is completely different from building on like the kennedy 24 deck because it's a nice big 24 millimeter diameter deck and it's really easy to build on doesn't feel claustrophobic at all this one feels claustrophobic and it's probably because i chose like you know uh fucking three millimeter coils to put on here but all good. We're just going to wick this up, and we're going to vape the crap out of this guy. All right, it's all wicked up. I'm just going to throw some juice on here. This is going to be some 3 milligram Epiclouds Caramelized Banana, just because I haven't had it in quite a while, but it was pretty easy to wick. It, you know, the tugboat was way ahead of its time. I mean, it wasn't ahead of its time. It was perfect for its time. It was one of the first rebuildable atomizers that I remember getting that I got, like, that first, like big dual airflow sort of hashtag clouds bro clouds situation from it so let me make sure all this cotton is wet before i fire it up one two three four five nope now it's locked one two three four five now it's unlocked let's see how it does yeah bro clouds 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 it's uh it's rocking and rolling i am going to put this top cap on now the the three post atomizer this one is especially difficult to build on because the post holes are really low to the deck. So when you built the tugboat, you had to do that scoopy thing. Ruby Roo taught me that. You bend your leads so you can scoop them into the holes. Otherwise, they go in and they just hit the other side of the deck of like the juice well. They'll just hit the other side. But if you bend them up, you can go whoop and just stick them in there. So... I use 22 gauge around a big, uh, you know, a big diameter post, so I wasn't able to center these, so they're kind of offset, but you can still line up the airflow with them. There you go, tugboat version 1, 0.17 ohm, that's an 8 wrap 22 gauge nichrome anarchist wire build around a 3 millimeter post, have it set to 80 watts, let's do some retro vaping. Wow. That airflow is so freaking tight. That's why the Tugboat version 1 was a flavor RDA. It had those tiny little holes. You still lung it. There's no way you can mouth to lung this. You still lung the hell out of it. God, that juice tastes amazing in this. Holy crap, this juice tastes good. Now... I've been vaping caramelized banana. Caramelized banana was one of our first flavors that we ever had ever in the Namber Juice lineup. And when we moved it to Epiclouds and it became a Max VG dripping juice, it just became amazing. I cannot get enough of this juice and the flavor in this Tugboat version 1 RDA. If you can find a Tugboat version 1 RDA, in fact, I'm going to link... To my, to my Tugboat version 1 RDA video. That's when I did the G-plat wire, I believe. I did the Tugboat version 1 RDA and G-plat wire. Remember when everyone was crazy for G-plat wire? And I was like, man, I don't really like it. I don't really know what it's made of. Turned out to be stainless steel. Turned out to be welding wire, I think. Anyway, I'm going to link to that in the description. But the flavor on this atomizer is bananas. Literally caramelized bananas wow wow flavor high flavor where have you been oh that's right i've been using 25 millimeter rtas that have little to no flavor it's nice to taste you again juice Good God, the flavor is amazing. The flavor is amazing. If you want a pure flavor atomizer, Tugboat V1 stock airflow. Build an 8-wrap 22 gauge on there. Fire it at 80 watts. Holy crap, I can't get over that. This flavor is amazeballs. Anyway, that's good. That's good with retro vaping. I'm going to see if I can track down like a tugboat. Do they even sell? Does Flawless even sell the tugboat version 1 anymore? Uh, no, doesn't look like they sell it. Uh, does not look like they sell it anywhere. Anyway, use your Google Foo 
to try to find somewhere cheap you can buy it. It looks like it's still in stock at Diamond Tech Vapor, $64.99. The tugboat Addy with included drip tip. Now, this looks suspiciously like the V2. I find it hard to believe this is the V1. And if it's the V1, it's got to be a clone. And why are they selling a clone? I don't think they ever did a media blasted blue tugboat version one. But I could be wrong. This looks a lot like the tugboat version two. Even No, the tugboat version two? I'm wrong. Nope. This is the tugboat version one because the tugboat version two had completely different airflow and a completely different top cap that you could use chuff caps on. Nope. Damn it, they do not sell. I don't even see tugboats on the Flawless site. They have the production RDA, they have the dinghy RDA, and they have square caps for the tugboat atomizer, but they don't have a tugboat version one. I'm, I'm not even joking. If you're a flavor chaser person and you want an amazing flavor RDA, find an authentic or even a clone tugboat version one and you will be in flavor city in flavorburg in the state of flavorton north flavor state berg east flavor coast nation look at that the dot mod fits in there this is awesome this is a fucking awesome vape. I've had two really good vapes, one right after the other. Tugboat version one and my little Joy Tech little fucking E-Grip 2 guy there. I'm sorry. I like good vapes. Good vapes make me happy and an excited person. All right. Well, I don't want this vlog to run any longer than it's supposed to, so I'm not going to do a review for things that never got reviewed, but we get to do a nice little flavor chasing segment there uh, with retro vaping. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do my favorite comments of the week. I'm going to announce the giveaway winner as well as another giveaway. So let's get over to my favorite comments of the week. And some of these are, oh man, just ridiculous. So comment of the week number one, a guy named Spectre left a funny comment. Uh, I was on my tsunami video and he said, what if the tsunami was called the salami instead? And when you vaped it, no matter what, it tasted like salami. <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> I just thought that was uh I just thought that was hilarious. Another comment of the week was actually not from YouTube. This was from an email. Who sent me this email? I think it was a guy named Chris. Uh he had some constructive criticisms for my channel and he said, Number one, constructive criticism. Overall, more Dwayne. You guys are amazing together, and I would pay money just to see you two talk about stuff. It's really entertaining. Shout out to Omboy OC. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, in just 10 short days, me and Mr. Omboy OC are headed out to Vegas, and we're going to go to the VPX event in Vegas. And listen, VPX, don't let me down. I am expecting no less than a fuck ton of advocacy. This is, I believe, the first event after the FDA deeming regulations have come out. So I want to see mountains, mountains of advocacy. I don't want to see cloud comps. I don't want to see trick comps. I don't want to see Miss Vapor USA. I don't want to see vape models. I want to see responsible vendors educating consumers and other vendors about the deeming FDA regulations. That's what I want to see, VPX. Don't let me down. Oh, and then this guy. This guy was just from this week. On Monday on my FDA video, I know he's just trolling. And I just thought it was the dumbest thing he could have possibly said. Howlin' Blind Muddy Slim. Great name, by the way. He commented and said, I just watched three minutes and I have to say, fuck you. Tobacco doesn't kill. <laughs> Oh, I want to chop this guy in the throat for being an idiot troll. Anyway, so moving forward from that, let's get to the giveaway winners. So I ran a giveaway last week for that copper ruby and that sub-ohm. 
uh, no, no, no. Project Sub Ohm uh, 18650 70 watt box mod. And what I requested was social media pictures of people watching the vlog. So there were a couple really cool ones that I thought. There was this one guy, Amarok94, and he just said, Enjoying Grim Green vlog, and I really want that little package he has in his hand. Send it to the Witty's Windy City. Well, Thank you for entering. Unfortunately, there can only be one winner, and it wasn't you. Another guy named Titty Sprinkles 47 photoshopped my vlog onto the Relo screen and said, that new Wismec update is crazy. <laughs> and I just thought that was uh, I just thought that was hilarious. I just like this girl's picture because she screen captured one of my favorite comments of the week and on her giant screen monitor it just says you're a pussy boy and it's her like haha you're a pussy boy thanks jen burger coleman that was hilarious and of course uh one of my favorite brits of all time oh my goth entered and she's just the cutest british girl that you've ever seen and uh she's watching the vlog and blowing a cloud and it's just said vlog day and grim ruby clouds and well while you are cute you did not win um this one was tough. This guy, listen, Mike, I, I, I love you, man. This is a funny picture, and you almost won. He just screen captured it, and it said, Grim Green heart to gart with his people. He knows I'm enjoying the vlog. Hashtag Grim Ruby Clouds. Hashtag Grim Army. Hashtag Ruby Crew. And the way he took this picture is he's just sitting in his boxers looking at the TV, and it looks like I'm looking like right down at him. Like I'm like, hmm. Hey there, buddy. What are you talking about? It looks like we're looking at each other, and that would that one was good. That one would make that one made me laugh. But the winner, of course, there can only be one winner, and it comes from an Instagrammer named I am Matt Moses, and he said just having a toot 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 watching Grim Green's vlog, and what he did is he wrote toot exclamation point on like. 20 pieces of paper and surrounded his TV with it and I just lost it. This was hilarious to me. I'm like, nope, that's it. I am Matt Moses. You won. I will be contacting you today via uh, Instagram direct message and I'm going to be getting your address and I'm going to ship you off that little box. So that wraps up that giveaway. So let's end. Let's end with another giveaway. Yeah. So I have this box here, and you're going to have to earn this giveaway. This is going to be a social media only giveaway. So Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. We're going to be using the hashtag, uh, shit. How about, um, ah, uh, shit. I don't know. How about... Oh, shit. I should have thought about this. I don't know what hashtag to use. Um, how about HR2058? Uh, uh, it has to be giveaway. Something with a giveaway so that... Oh, shit. I'm going to have to check Instagram now. And I don't even have my fucking phone. Where did I put my phone? Oh, come on, Nick. So you're going to go on Instagram. Twitter or Facebook, you're going to use the hashtag GreenHR2058. Ready? GreenHR2058. I want everybody to make a sign that says this. Vaping saved my life. Support HR2058. I want to see this fucking everywhere. If you know your representatives' Twitter accounts or Instagram accounts, tag them. Don't just at them. Don't just mention them. Physically tag them in the photo. If you're on Twitter and you want to get the attention of any news media outlets, Donald Trump, Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, the FDA, the FDA tobacco, tag them in this as well. I want this to go everywhere. Obviously, yours doesn't have to have a Grim Army sticker on it, but this is what I want to see. Just a picture of your face putting a face on vaping. And I don't care if you're blowing a cloud or vaping. In fact, not vaping would be even better. Just your face and a sign that says vaping saved my life. Support HR 2058.
That's all you have to do. Take a picture. This has to go on social media. You can't just email these to me. As much as I love seeing all your beautiful faces, this is something to raise awareness for HR 2058. Include other hashtags in there like support HR 2058, hashtag vaping save my life, hashtag HR 2058, hashtag save vaping. Use all the advocacy hashtags Tag your senators, your congressmen, the presidential candidates, any news media you can think of. Tag everybody. That's what I want to see. But you have to use the hashtag GreenHR2058. So what are we giving away? Well, I've got a whole huge box here. And this is multiple giveaways enclosed in this box. And I'm just going to pick a few things. How about a brand new Copper Rig V2 Mech Mod? Look at that. Brand new Copper Rig V2 Mech Mod. Sure. Let's save that for another one. Let's save that for another one. How about this? Heracles version 2, 25 millimeter RTA. That's a good one. Yeah. How about, how about a matchy matchy BMI Goldie RDA? Let's put that in there as well. How about this? How about a matchy matchy copper continuous current Tactical Warhead RDA. Sure, that sounds good to me. Got a lot of, uh, ooh, got a lot of things in here. And how about lastly, let's go with this guy. Let's go with that Shadow Vapor MGNT Magnetic Cap uh, RDA. Sure. So you're getting two, three RDAs, a tank, and a mech mod. Cool. I think that sounds cool. Three RDAs a tank, and a mech mod. Rig version 2, BMI Goldie, continuous current tactical warhead, a sense Heracles tank version 2 RTA, and a Shadow Vapor MGNT rebuildable dripping atomizers. Three atomizers, a mech mod, and a tank. Cool? I think this is a bitchin' giveaway. I just need you to do this. One picture, boom. Vaping saved my life, support HR 2058. Tag me if you want, but please use the hashtag GreenHR2048, 2058, GreenHR2058, and you will be entered to win. We're going to run it the same way we did last time. Today is Thursday, so you have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday at midnight is when I'm going to cut it off, and the winners will be announced in the following vlog, the last vlog before I go to VPX. Cool? Cool. I think that's cool. I think that's a rocking giveaway, and I've got a ton of... I've got a ton more stuff in here to give away. Should I throw in another tank? No, Heracles, no. Nope, that's going to be all for the next giveaway. So here's what we're doing. We're doing this, and we're giving it away. So that's what I got. I'm going to wrap up this vlog, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you, everybody, so much for being involved with the newest FDA regulations. I see a lot of really passionate, fired up vapors that are in it for the long haul. This is what I do. Vaping is my life. I don't have an exit strategy and I don't have a backup plan. So I'm in this within the trenches with you guys through thick and thin until the very end. And I do believe that at the end, vaping will come out victorious. And it's like I was telling people on Instagram, it's like, I'm not voting for any certain candidate, I am voting for vaping. Vaping has turned me into a single issue voter. Chances are I'm going to vote for the libertarian Gary Johnson, but I believe in vaping. I believe in us and I believe in the community. And I think that we can, I think we can finally come together and rock some ass and, uh, you know, put the naysayers, you know, shut the naysayers up. And there was people even commenting on, uh, on that FDA video I did where a guy was saying, uh, well, you know, I hate to be a pessimist, but no matter what you do, the government's just going to do whatever they want. And I hate to sound defeatist, but that's just the reality of it. And my response to him was, okay, fine, then get out of the way so we can change history without you. Because I I don't have time for that. I have a, a, a fuck ton of people. I have the entire Grim Army that are all fired up to change these FDA regs and to change history. We are going to be changing history, people. It's not just saving lives. It's not just clouds grow clouds. It's changing history. Sorry to get all Tony Robbins on you, but I believe in vaping and I believe in this goddamn community. So 
Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I'm gonna use my little E-Grip 2 here, set to 35 watts, and I'm just gonna vape my happy little face off tonight. I still have to eat dinner, and it's really late. But that's what I got, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, let's keep on vaping.